Hello everyone, welcome to Everyday Affairs, where we bring you all trending news and information on things happening around the world. I appreciate every one of you who has subscribed to this channel. However, if you're yet to subscribe, kindly click on the subscribe button on the right hand side of your screen, written in red, subscribe, and also hit the bell icon by its side so that you can get notification whenever a new story is published. Thank you and stay tuned. Nam the Kano is a scam. Using Biafra to scam Golibu Ibus, says Ebony State Governor David Umahi. The governor of Ebony State, David Umahi, has described the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, Nam the Kano, as the greatest scammer in Igbo land. The governor noted that Nandekano is using the message of Biafra to defraud Golibu Ibus. Our people are being deceived to spend huge amount of money to finance what they know nothing about, while Nandekano spent it on his personal issues. David Umahi said that the IPOB leader uses cheap lies and blackmails against his government on social media to gain the empathy from some egos, asking the public to disregard such information. The governor said in as much as he wouldn't dignify the miscreants by joining issues with him, it had become pertinent to let the public know his new antics so they could be wary of him. Umar, he described his group's action as the last kick of a dying horse. Having now realized that their fraudulent activities in the name of IPOB have been exposed. And the Kano is being used to destabilize Endibu by deceiving people into believing that he can give them Biafra. Today, Kano is using the same deceit to cause confusion in the Igbo land, not considering their adverse effects. All right, viewers and listeners, you've heard the news story. Uh, Governor David Umahi of Ebony State, who has been very, very vocal recently, has come out again to accuse Namdekano as a scammer, saying that Namdekano is using Biafra to scam Golibu Ibos of their hard earned resources. What are your take on this particular issue? Is it true that this is what is happening? Is it true? Is what the governor has accused them the Kano of true? He, uh, the governor said Nam the Kano cannot give the Igbos Biafra, but he's using that to uh, to to is using that to collect huge money from Igbos deceiving them into believing that he will be able to give them Biafra and he's spending the money on his personal issues. These are two top men who um, have scarce, who have resources with them. Now, who do we believe and uh, who has the correct fact? Biafra we know has been, uh, the Biafra agitation we know has been on for quite some time. <laughs> And it recently took a new dimension um, when Namdekano took over the reins of affairs um, during the Buhari administration, you know, raising the issues of marginalization of the Igbos and um, making the Igbos to demand their own nation called Biafra. Let's not forget that this was what led to a civil war between Nigeria and the Igbos during uh, which the war was led by former Biafran warlord Odmegu Ojuku. Now, David Umahi has come out to say that um, Namdekano is using Biafra to scam Igbos. Is it true? Does he have evidences to prove this claim? You as a person, do you believe this is the situation of things? Let's not forget that Nambikano has been making some revelations recently as to 
what is happening within the government of President Muhammad Buhari. And also, let's not also forget that David Mahia also said that the IPOP leader is using cheap lies and blackmails against his government on social media to gain empathy from some Igbos. Could this be true? And why would um, Nambekano descend this law? Or why would he go this route just to discredit David Umahi? Do they have personal issues? Do they have any um, disagreement or misunderstanding that would make Nambekano to, um, to, to go into blackmails of David Umahi? And more so, are there evidences that... Um, Nambi Kano has been blackmailing or has blackmailed David Umahi? Well, I don't know. I don't have any facts at the moment. But I'm putting the questions to you so that you can help answer this question. But eventually, you have come across any information or you know or you've heard or you've seen. So, why he said, as he's describing, why he described the group's action as the last kick of a dying horse. Having now realized that their fraudulent activities in the name of IPOV has been exposed. So in this case, what are the fraudulent activities that IPOV has been carrying out or has been involved in? Or Nambikano has been actually involved in? What are the fraudulent activities? How have they been exposed? Nambikano is being used to destabilize Ndibo by deceiving people into believing that he can give them Biafra. Who are those using Inamdekano to deceive Igbos? Because these are huge allegations. These are huge um, words, you know, uh, that would need um, evidences to corroborate, that would need evidences to also um, prove that this is not the situation or this is what is actually happening. We all know that Nambekano has issues with the federal government. We also know that Nambekano has been in uh, has been abroad. We also know that Nambekano drew his um, daily or uh, drew his uh, Facebook uh, broadcast. You know, has been making revelations, has been saying a lot of things, exposing some uh, a lot of um, issues uh, with the government of Nigeria and some other foreign government. But does that mean? that Nambikano has been blackmailing the Igbos. So in what way has he been, or ways has he been um, deceiving the Igbos? And who are the people behind Nambikano? Who are the people using him? Who are the people giving him money or supporting him, you know, based on the claims of the Eboi State Governor, David Umahi? These are issues that needs to be addressed. These are issues that needs to be nipped into the board so that the public can have a clear understanding of what is actually going on. Let's also not forget that Enam Bekano, who is now the head of the Biafran uh, people, or who is now called the Biafran leader, is also, uh, is also said to be vast in a lot of issues that is going on in the world presently. So what does Nambekano stand to gain by blackmailing David Umahi or collecting money from Igbos in the name of Biafra? Well, we know that this agitation has been on for quite some time and uh, it is a continuous thing. He met with uh, the uh, people in the parliament, the United Nations, he was in Japan, and uh, he was in the U.S. also, the United Nations, and some other, um, he met some other world leaders. Well, the outcome, you know, we do not actually know what the outcome of those meetings actually are at the moment. But these are steps that we know and we have seen and we read that Nambikano had taken all in the name to restore Bihafra to the land. So if this was going to happen, we don't know yet. If it is not going to happen, we definitely do not know. But the agitation for Biafra is still on and um, it's going on. Well, if what the, uh, the state governor has claimed and has said 
is true. And now the Kano would have to come forward to make the denials or present himself and present evidences as to how untrue what uh, the governor of every state, David Omahi, claims uh, are. Well, that's my opinion on this particular news story. I'd like to hear from you, especially my Biafran brothers, my Biafran guys, and my Biafran friends. I'd like to hear from you what your thoughts are on this particular news story. What information do you have and um, how true is this allegation? Please do not forget to share this news story with people, friends, family, relations, and the world wishers so that they can get to know what is going on um, within the country, even as we aim to bring you informative and educative news from around the world. And please do not forget, if you are yet to subscribe, I kindly, uh, I kindly um, indulge you to please subscribe to this channel. And do not forget to click the bell icon so that you can get notification whenever we post a news story. Uh, also, for those of you that have subscribed, I appreciate you so much. I thank you. I, I said God bless you. And I wish you a wonderful season filled with prosperity, God's love, and kindness, and mercy. Do not forget, I wish you a happy listening. <laughs>